My name is Fisto Ndashimie, and today we're going to talk about Multiculture Festival Event 2022. It's happening on Sunday, September 18th. But today, before we get started, I have a pleasure to speak to our special guest. And before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to our channel, share our videos, like, and ring that bell. With that being said, let's get to it. Okay, guys, we have a lot to talk about today, and uh, we're happy to have you both here. Thank you. Uh, Thank but before we get started, how about if you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Ghana Sharma. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from Bhutan, uh, also called Land of Thunder Dragon. Uh, we were refugees for uh, 20 plus years in Nepal, and we came here in 2009. And... Um, I work in several places, uh, and uh, most of them they know me that I am one of the educator at Concord High School right. since 2010. And simultaneously, I am uh, I have been working as the organizer with Jessica Livingstone, the festival director, since 2012, and currently I am acting as a co-chair. For the festival and that's it great thank you um i'm jessica livingston i'm the director of the multicultural festival in concord and um i wear many hats but this is definitely my favorite hat i've been organizing it since 2013 but the year before i did work with ghana on a, a combined event so um, this will be my ninth festival or eighth, I think, oh, wow. eighth festival organizing, but it feels like I've been doing it forever. Um, and it is by far my favorite event. For me, it's so much more than an event. Um, and we can, we'll get into all of that, but that's who I am. So as director of uh, Merch Culture Festival, how about if you kick us off and talk about uh, this event? Sure. We might have uh, our viewers, some of them maybe doesn't know what's going on. That's, so, yeah. Everybody should know. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's Sunday the 18th. Mm -hmm. We extended the hours to, um, so it starts at 1030 um, and it goes till 430. We'll kick off with an international flag parade. We have flags from um, almost 70 different countries, which are representative of the people here in our community. Right. So that right there just shows how diverse we are. And it and our diversity goes much deeper than the color of our skin. Um, um, there's so many people whose ancestors came here from, um, from Ireland, England, Germany, France, um, and then a million other places over the world, and right. as well as Canada. Uh, Concord actually has a very rich history of immigration. So it's a way for us, for new Americans to all, to, carry the flag from their home country and share in, and celebrate that, um, as well as for people like me who have, um, my ancestors on my mom's side came over from right. England and Ireland and Scotland. But my father came from Argentina, so I'm first generation Argentinian. So it's a way to connect with our all of our heritages. Um, no matter how long you've lived here. <clears throat> um, so anyway, so the flag parade kicks off at 1030. Um, everybody's welcome to carry a flag. You just sign up on our website for whichever flag you want. Yeah. And then after the parade, we will have opening ceremonies by Paul and Denise Puglio, who are the leaders of the Kawasak Band of Abenaki. Yeah. Um, Kawasak Band of the Penacook Abenaki people. I want to make sure I say that correctly. So they'll right. do the land acknowledgement, the welcome, and then we'll have um, opening ceremonies with our multicultural dance program, which is run by our other co-chair, Cindy Chown. She created this dance program for um, children between ages 6 and 14. Right. It's free for them to attend, and they learn cultural dances, not only from Colombia, which is where Cindy's from, but they, they're also learning Indian dancing and Nepali dancing, and, um, and they tour around the state, and they've even been going to Massachusetts recently to perform. So they'll be doing an opening number, and then hopefully if we run on time with everything, Aquaba, 
Aquaba Ensemble will kick us off at 11, and then we just go straight through until 4.30 with performances. And then while that's happening, there's almost 20 food vendors and craft vendors, artists who are selling their work. There'll be activities for kids and adults to engage in, right. connect with, learn about different cultures. There's just so much. <laughs> so. I mean, this is an opportunity for uh, everybody who's part of this community to learn about all these differences. I just heard something, uh, I don't even know what it is, Aqua, but what is that? Aquaba Ensemble. So, in um, so their group, they're from Ghana originally okay. on the west coast of Africa. Right. And Aquaba means welcoming, I believe. Um, so they are a drumming ensemble, and so they do the you know authentic um, West African drumming. Right. And Theo Marte, who is the leader of that ensemble, was just named New Hampshire's artist laureate um this year so he's kind of a big deal now <laughs> so right. they're a, they're really fun they're very engaging people love the the african drums so well i'm gonna get back to you okay but i want to know what we have for food what are you preparing for us uh yes uh jessica already mentioned about uh, there are at least 20 vendors food vendors and right. september 17 and September 18, both the days are big day for us. Okay. Uh, that would be only the day that we mm. test around the world. And last year I made the phrase by myself around the world in four plus hours. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In Conquer, right? right? It's impossible to go around the world in four hours. It's yes. impossible. So we made that happen in Conquer. Right. Since uh, 2012 or so, when we started working actively mm -hmm. and uh, coordinating with a lot of people, this year we have um, we have 15 or 14 new American vendors, right? And then other 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 vendors are commercial vendors, right? And uh, commercial vendor uh, they cook food. Uh, at their uh, business from their business like restaurant or so and bring their and they sell to the festival uh, to the festival yes mm -hmm. but new american vendors uh, they cook food at new hampshire food bank they are very energy those people they ha they are very helpful and since right. then we started coordinating with them uh, they provide everything possible for the vendors, each vendor. This year it will be a little bit busy, I <laughs> guess. Uh, we have a lot of things, a lot of uh, recipe to cook within one day. Okay. And it is said that, uh, uh, it is said that uh, food bank uh, opens at 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And last, uh, last year's experience that I have, I never took rest for like <laughs> 10 hours. That's a lot. Always busy uh, cooking and then helping the vendors. Right. And uh, we work together. And regardless of whosoever, right. we do not even ask about what kind of food is this, what is it, but we help each other there. And scenario at that place will be so amazing if you go and visit once on this September 17th. And then uh, I am serve safe too, and I I am a food vendor coordinator exactly. for that day. <laughs> right. So I I really don't like eating outside my house, which is mostly when I uh, visit like friends mm -hmm. uh, or any other family members. I don't like eating outside my house. Like how like the how how can you talk to someone like me like maybe there's my, my our viewers there might be someone like me like how how they like, i want to hear you talk about this because yeah. i really want to eat i want to test that different differences you know what i'm saying like i want to test that food so yeah like uh, there is nothing else going on we have all the levels then from what is the source of the food that where it did come from right 
and what are the ingredients present in that food that will be posted on the on the small pamphlets in front of the food bank. That's totally organized. Okay. Not like somebody is bringing food and selling there. No. Everything is very official mm -hmm. and inspected by the city mm -hmm. okay. the health department. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then only uh, the vendor starts selling the food that day. It does okay. not mean that somebody brings food and starts selling right away. No. Everything is very official. And some of the, one of the well-wishers of our festival said that last year, uh, when we, when, when I was going around and this festival should happen not once a year. <laughs> it should happen every week, <laughs> Mr. Sarma, I said. And I laughed, <laughs> smiled a little bit. And why did she say that? But I don't know. But it will be like that. And it has lots of flavors coming over there, even right. though it is an open space and people come and it will be amazing. I even think like that it's essential to, for our community. And yes. Stuff, so. People have been saying right. that for years. They say that to me all the time and I just want to cry when they do because usually when they say it, it's like while we're in, like while right. we're doing the event and there's so much work that goes into the event. Right. Um, so to do it <laughs> more than once a year mm -hmm. is, a little overwhelming but I've learned that when people say that what they mean is that we need access to culture more than once a year right the, it's a great celebration of our cultures and the people who um, who live here and share their cultures it's a wonderful community event but it shouldn't just be once a year that we're celebrating our diversity we should be every day not just celebrating diversity but integrating the diversity into our everyday lives right. and um, so having food vendors um, eventually open up their own restaurants or craft vendors participating in larger community arts festivals right. um, and just and just making it so that the mission of the festival to be a welcoming community for everybody happens every single day of our lives so planning an event at this size of this scope every week is you know it's we too much, it's too much. It's, and it's yeah. great to have I've once a that. year but we need to do more events throughout the year of and course. we have been yeah. starting to do more and more but it's because people just really want to support new americans they yeah. really want to share their culture they want access to other cultures to learn about each other it's just such an amazing event and imagine if we could inject that spirit into our everyday lives right so i want to know that th this whole event takes a community mm -hmm. together and this this is what makes this community diverse community. Mm -hmm. So it's coming together and do something like that together. What are you expecting from the community? What are you expecting from the people? So the community in general have always come out in huge support of this event. Yes. I've been organizing events for twenty years. It's <laughs> a long time. It's a long time. Um, and I've done you know a lot of community events. I've done I've created events from scratch. I've you know, I've done every type of event there is, and and they're events. I mean, they're just they happen, and sometimes it's hard to get people to attend for whatever reasons. But this event is so special because it people look forward to it every year. They right. mark their calendars for it every year. People say it's their favorite event. They say it's their favorite day of the year, um, and it's just this event is one that the community just comes out and support wholeheartedly. They help on the committee, they help volunteer the day of, they help and participate in different ways. And uh, I will never forget the first event that I organized. I had no idea what to expect because it was my, I had never even attended the festival before. So I had, I took it over because I had the, the event management skills, but I didn't, I didn't know anybody in the multicultural right. community. Thank God for Ghana and a few others who really helped. But I remember, you know, the day of the event, you know, working so hard to get everything set up, up and running, making sure the DJ's there, the performers are there, right. the tables are in the right places. And I just, at one point I just stopped for a minute, like right after it started. And I just like looked around, there were so many people there and the vibe, like the feeling there was just so incredible. And I knew right then, like my life changed after that. And this has become my pride and joy because the outpouring of community support is just unmatched in anything I've ever organized. So yeah, I mean, I, I think this, this event is 
one of the things that we need is like someone who comes from different country like mm -hmm. i come from democratic republic of congo it's mm -hmm. really far from here mm -hmm. coming in this country it's where this this is this makes everything beautiful mm -hmm. it kind of it shows a respect to my culture and to differences yeah so i'm gonna ask Sham, shama yes about this like how is this to you like how do you feel about this event as someone who comes from a different country yeah they just for that day they feel like they went to their homeland and they are enjoying it and they imagine it that i am like individual one is there in their country for like for that four hours already i have mentioned right they, they feel like that they smell like that and then they have their you know, thinking and feeling that uh, uh, world is too small now and then we are uh, regardless of wherever we we do go but our culture follow us right they think course. like that they have their opinion i guess this is just my opinion but i cannot guarantee maybe uh, but main objective is that we have to uh, we have to make our uh, kids the follower of this kind of event like uh, we have to engage those kids especially in this kind of cultural social yeah. and whatever kind of yeah. event yeah. so that at least they uh, they can picture the theme of the event uh, something in their mind right like after 20 to 30 years we right. we will like jessica will stop doing that i will stop doing that mm -hmm. but to follow this one, we have to engage the youth or kids mm -hmm. uh, to continue this kind of even so that they know each other. The main theme of uh, multicultural is, yes, it has one definition, but main theme of this festival is to bring all together. Right. And there must not be any kind of biasness. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. One should not treat another person with some sort of eyes. We are all same and uh, we, are play we have the same playground. Right. This is the theme of this festival mm -hmm. in extent integrated way. Right. But in a small way, oh, this is multicultural festival that happens in September month of September, like second week, blah blah something else. <laughs> but core theme is to bring all together, and integrated is to uh, bring somebody as our follower, and one should not see other another one with different eyes. We are right. all same. Of course, and I understand like, that. Right. Like regarding food, you, for example, I have bigger responsibility in food uh, with food vendors and especially I'm specialized in that food section and uh, regarding the food safety. Right. Uh, I got to know that, okay, African uh, and uh, uh, Bhutanese or whosoever, we use same raw food. But we cook in different <laughs> way. Right, of yeah. course. Same food, exactly. All the same. Yep. The same food. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But oh, that is that. Oh, that that food food is different. And no, it's not made the same. Right. All same. Right. We use exactly, almost all the same. <laughs> right. Because I got the resource from where we get. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing we buy, right? Right. Exactly. But we cook differently, but same ingredients. <laughs> so what is the change? What is the difference? So this is how. Uh, we have to work together, mm -hmm. then definitely we will do something in future, yeah? Exactly. And this multicultural fest festival has the, uh, the bigger theme. We are, we, like, we are the organizer, uh, Jessica, Cindy, and me. We are the organizer, we are at the, at the, uh, at the top muscle level, people will say that, but it's not us. Everybody, we have to work together. Right. We have to bring everybody in that scenario. We have advertised a lot this year, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even Concord High, I have that uh, banner nearby the right. corner. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing, I've been seeing it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Every, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Our main goal is to bring most of the people of Concord, not only Concord, mm -hmm. Manchester, everywhere, mm -hmm. so that uh, we will know each other. Right. Who is who? Right. This is the theme of the festival. Like um, this year, we are planning uh, to bring some new cultural concert, like uh, tease dance, right. if possible. I cannot guarantee now. Tease, tease dance from Nepal. Mm -hmm. 
and then several other um, other concerts from different parts of the world, at least we have some experience there, we see each other. Right. We know each other, what is what. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our goal. Right. And I understand that we, we need to get used to United States American culture. Yeah. It's important. Important too, yeah. And because everything is about this culture. Yes. It's a system. Yeah. It's very important to get used to it and to respect it. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you have to forget who you are and you don't need to, you know, not exercise your your culture, your understand your uh, culture, uh, you know, yes. where you come from, your country, or yes. uh, having something together with the family, doing something that you used to do in, in your, back in your country, tradition and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, it's very important to always do that and always remember who you are. And for us, like we who come from different countries, different areas, it's very important that the community also respect who we are. Yes, it's what mm -hmm. makes us united, mm -hmm. and this is all we need. And this this event represents that. Yes, so, um, bottle of water, clean water, and uh, uh, a bottle of uh, uh, orange juice. Right. If we mix a little bit. There is water and orange juice. Everything it smells exactly right. Yeah. We should be like that. We, my opinion, uh, we should not uh, forget our culture. Not only us, our uh, our offspring, our uh, children should not forget our at least right. the culture from where we are. And like mm, kids, those who are born here, they never say I'm from. Um, <laughs> my origin is like Bhutan, like Africa. I'm not. They will not, when the kids are born here, they never say, I'm from Congo, right? Right. But still, what is your origin? And that they should say that I'm Congolese or I'm Bhutanese. At least, mm -hmm. not only now, but when they go to higher level of education, like when they get scholarship in college, that some, of, some people, they do not know anything about immigrants or refugees. Right. This is the biggest land <laughs> that... We are like very small person. The people they do not know. But just to know, to educate the people, this is one of the main key resources that people can come talk about cultural resources and norms and values, ethic, and um, how to do this. Like, for example, um, Nepali cultural food, whole plate of rice with curry is in front of you. Right. But for, for some second you will wonder that how should I, how do I eat this? With a spoon <laughs> I can use or a hand I can use. Right. <laughs> who will who will educate you to eat that? So how do you eat it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's the question. That's the way we learn. Mm -hmm. well, so how do you, how I know how to, <laughs> how to eat a slice of pizza. How, how should I eat? What are the things needed? Same thing we are educating. This is one of the secondary parts. Yes. How to eat, what are the ingredients present in food. And um, for example, person in the red sari with all ornaments, well attired, person appeared. And some of the people may stare and some of them they wonder to explain that one that is the kind of festival oh i saw this in concord multicultural festival that this is for these teas is special and person with some sort of uh, tikka in their forehead they appear oh i saw in the tv that this is the cultural festival of um, somebody else that they do like this right, right. we did omaganda there right mm -hmm. yeah. That's in the interview or something. At least kids know, oh, this is from Omaganda. Yeah. These are the different uh, culture that we are trying to share with this bigger community. Right. We are very small. And then to extend our, <clears throat> extend our um, uh, thought and our culture and share with this bigger community, it makes some sense. Mm -hmm. At least they will know, they will not think that we are standard, right? right. This is the this is one of the theme of our festival. Right. But anyway, that that was great. <laughs> so um, 
so it it's our responsibility to keep everyone safe because this event is going to be a big event so to make sure everybody's safe around us it's all our responsibility make sure you come you show up but i'm, I'm gonna have to, have to ask you a question mm -hmm. about safety yep. what what do you what do you think about safety what are you preparing what's so, of course, safety is our number one priority. We yeah. want everybody to come enjoy it, eat the food, connect with each other, dance, laugh, all of that. But really, safety is our priority, especially, mostly because, I mean, safety is safety. We want everyone right. safe. But a lot of the refugees have come from places that are not safe, um, and they've fled war and violence and all of that. And so we want to make sure that they are not re-traumatized here in their home. Right. Um, and it's tricky. So normal events of this size, you would have police details. Um, there would be like X amount of police per number of people, and they would just be there to make sure, you know, patrolling sort of to make sure that um, nothing's happening. But here you can't, we can't do that because police patrolling in uniform is intimidating and yeah. traumatizing to right. some of the refugee community. And they either feel unsafe or they feel like they shouldn't go, they, they're mistrusting. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done to build those bridges between law enforcement and the refugee community. And it's happening little by little, but we want to make sure we take everything into account for this festival to make sure everybody feels safe. So we do have a plan. There will be police there. They won't be intimidating. They'll be there, you know, on the right. sidelines, paying attention, trying to interact where it's appropriate, and also just keeping an eye on everything just to make sure that there's nothing going on. Right. Um, and they're there in case they're we need help with anything um, and then we will have a few peacekeepers as well who are people who are trained to de-escalate situations mm -hmm. um, and just to be there as a safe person um, last year we had some peacekeepers helping people to cross Loudon Road because it's such a busy road right. um, and they're just kind of there to keep their eyes open as well and they're not you know they're in regular clothes and I think sometimes they wear a safety vest but um, but overall, it's there's never been any issues. We've always it, nobody's ever had gotten hurt. There's never been any any need for the police really. Um, just a few minor like you know people being disruptive. But otherwise, yeah. thank thankfully we've never had any incident. And I and I would much rather be safe right. and make sure I have all my bases covered. Make sure everybody's safe. And even if people want to call me dramatic, <laughs> I will still be dramatic to ensure that nobody is hurt. Everybody's so, safe. That everybody is safe and nothing happens. Right. Is there anything you guys want to add on about anything? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jessica already mentioned about that. Uh, yeah, that event is really a big event. But until now, there is no record of anything that we were in trouble. Nothing. Nope. Right. Nothing related to safety or something. Oh, uh, God bless us uh, that this will continue forever. Yes. Right. Um, but until now, nothing, very small issue had had happened until right. yet. And so, so amazing. Nothing happened yet. Great. Yeah. Everything is supportive. And Great. then everybody supports them, yeah. whosoever they come. And uh, last year was the amazing. Mm. Yeah, we used to do uh, Concord Multicultural Festival in downtown. Even then, that was uh, the great amazing place. Right. But because of some some parking or something like that, the streets. Right. But from last year, uh, it's completely different. Yes, different. we're at Keach and we Park did not, now. We yeah. did not even imagine <clears throat> that many people would show up. But hope this year the Weather has been already scheduled, right? Yes. <laughs> so it will be. That's what I hear. People. Yeah. <laughs> there are going to be many people. Many people, yeah. But it yeah. been a pleasure. We hope so. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's been a pleasure speaking with you guys yeah. about this event. Likewise. I can't wait. Me too. <laughs> Best luck on this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure, again, once again, make sure you subscribe to our channel, share our videos, like, and ring that bell. I will see you next time.